peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of our God and the Savior Jesus Christ. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I trust that you had a good week. Did you have a good week? Uh huh. You look like you had a good week. Dressed nicely, smiling brightly, I'm handsome as ever, beautiful as ever. God bless you. Um, first, let me take this moment to um, publicly express um, gratitude to the saints here at Breath of Life and um, its leadership for not only this opportunity to speak, but um, their endorsement of um, my ministry four years ago and beyond. Um, it has been quite a while, and I've not been here in the last four years, and I'm happy to see your face. Is that all right? All right. My, just, just that um, you should know, um, my, my, my family is doing fine. Onika is trying her best with the children while I am away, and um, we are just about ready to wrap up our studies in Trinidad, and um, that's just by the way of um, information. So I do count it a privilege to be here and uh, to um, share part of my ministry with you. Our message today comes from the book of Psalms. Where does the message come from? From where does the message come? The book of Psalms. And we are going to focus on Psalm 23 with specific reference to verse 6. Psalm 23. It is a very familiar text. And um, should I ask that we read it? I'm sure everybody will just keep their Bibles closed and recite from memory. Are you ready for such a challenge? Psalm 23. Let's go. The Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leads me for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Surely, verse 6, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The title of today's message is, My Future Looks Pretty Bright. Thank you. My future looks pretty bright. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, you have said that by the entrance of your word, you give light. Teach us, Lord, by the teaching ministry of your Holy Spirit, what it means to be hopeful concerning the future. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. My future looks pretty bright. Thank you. This is a title that is not said plainly. It needs to be said with an attitude. Could I ask anyone with an attitude to say that for me? Oh, sorry. May I ask someone to say it with an attitude? That sound better? All right. Let's go. My future looks 
pretty bright. Thank you. Judging from the Barbados Labor, Labor Party's 2018 manifesto, the casual reader would observe readily that the future of the nation of Barbados looks pretty bright. With a supporting cast of 29, 29 members of parliament, Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley affirms, and I quote, Team BLP 2018 and I are determined to deliver new opportunities, lasting prosperity, and a bright future for all Barbadians, end of quote. Additionally, to demonstrate her seriousness about her pledge on her return from um, talks with the IMF last week, she said this, and I quote, I want barbarians to relax. We got this. I want barbarians to relax. We got this. I do not in any way mean any sarcasm. I don't want to sound bright, but I do believe what she's saying. What she is saying is hopeful, optimistic, and I believe that from intensive retrospection, deliberate introspection, calculated projections, Barbados looks pretty bright. She admitted that there will be challenges, sacrifices will have to be made, hurdles will have to be crossed, obstacles will have to be out overcome, but she gives an assurance to the people under her guidance and leadership that the future looks pretty bright. This idea does not only come from the lips of a leader. This idea comes from the lips of a psalmist. Psalm 23 is affectionately referred to as the shepherd's psalm, the nightingale psalm, the pearl of the psalms. The song is composed of two stanzas, each of which employs a different metaphor describing the relationship between the author and his Lord. Stanza one is made up of four verses, captured in the pastoral lands of Palestine, where the young once shepherd condescends and assumes a position of a weak, defenseless, and sheepishly foolish creature. The image of his Lord as a shepherd here means more to him than an impersonal rock or shield. The Lord, he says, is my shepherd. My shepherd. I know that God is the shepherd of his people Israel. I know he is the shepherd of breath of life. But he must come to a place where he declares that the Lord is my shepherd. Stanza 2 is comprised of verses 5 and 6. Reminiscent of the palace experience of a king. Which the Psalter, in which the Psalter is a favored guest. And his Lord 
a lavishly gracious host. Here the king attends to him personally and is not described in terms of a distant king or a distant deliverer, but a very personal, a close king. He says that uh, um, uh, um, he anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over when I'm in the presence of the king. I am lavishly treated. That's what he's saying. So David, it is, it is uncertain as to the time that David composed this hymn. But internal and external evidence seem to suggest that it was written when David was aged. I want you to just follow me as I go through a, a, a quote from um, McLaren. He writes, There is a fullness of experience about it, it being the 23rd Psalm, and a tone of subdued, quiet confidence which speaks of a heart mellowed by years and of a faith made sober by many trials. He continues, a young man would not write so calmly and a life which was just opening would not, could not afford material for such a record of God's guardianship in all changing circumstances. David ends the song of six, six lines, six verses, two stanzas, he ends by saying, Surely, goodness and mercy will follow me. He remembers green valleys, gentle streams, dark glens, stormy years of warfare and rebellion and crime and sorrow. He remembers the years gone by and he projects his thoughts to the years to come. And he is saying that in those years to come, goodness and mercy will follow me. He declared that his future appeared pretty bright to him. Today, someone who may be perplexed about the future, asking questions that pertain to the future and finding no answer. Would this hurt ever leave my heart? Will the bank repossess my house and land? How much longer do I have to rent? What is the future of this relationship? Do we even have a future? These questions may be asked. The concerns are genuine. But the psalmist points us to a time gone by and points us to a time to come. Do you mind if we spend some time looking back? I'll take three of the images that he used and look back with him. I'll start with the one concerning restoring the soul. Then I'm going to move to quiet waters. And then I'm going to move to green pastures. Look back with me for a minute. When the psalmist says, he restores my soul, he is speaking of a time when his soul was actually broken. Not just hurt by the words of someone, not just mistreated by a son, but hurt deep within that he had hurt the heart of God. His soul was broken and his soul needed to be mended. He restored my soul and he saw himself as a shepherd going with his sheep. 
The sheep have a way of straying. Sheep have a way of... Stay with me, church. Sheep have a way of... Straying sheep need to be found. We would remember the parable of Jesus. Which one of you having a hundred sheep? And you happen to lose one of those sheep. Would you not secure the ninety and the nine and go after the one which was lost? And when the shepherd goes after the sheep, he brings the sheep back. The sheep leaves again. The shepherd goes after the sheep, brings it back. There comes a time when the shepherd has to do something drastic in order to keep the sheep where he should be. It may appear to be cruel to some, but the shepherd in those times broke the legs of the sheep. Cruel as it may appear, it has an intention. Look back with me for a minute. When the leg is broken, the shepherd has to bandage that leg and fetch that sheep around. Time after time by carrying that sheep, the sheep gets to know the heart of the shepherd. He looks into the eyes of the shepherd and while his leg is broken and is being healed, his soul is being restored and he's being attached to the shepherd. I don't know how many of us can look back at the times when we strayed from God and we said, like the hymn writer, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more, but... The master of the sea heard my despairing cry and from the water lifted me. He restored my soul. Look back with me for a minute. Not only does the soul of the sheep need to be restored, the Bible says that he leads me beside what? You're with me. He leads me beside still waters. Now, it could mean that the shepherd takes the sheep to calm, quiet places. Places of peace. Is, is that all right? That's cool. But there is something else to this. Thirsty sheep, hold up. Thirsty sheep, having traversed arid lands, baking lands, at the first sight of water, they rush to it. Look back with me for a minute. The shepherd went before the sheep and took stones, bramble, whatever could be found, and placed it in the path of a rushing stream, making the water calm enough for the sheep to drink. Some sheep, when they rush into a rushing stream, their coats get wet. They lose their equilibrium and drown. How many times did we think that we were so thirsty? Look back with me. That at the sight of water, we rushed into the stream, got our coats wet, lost our equilibrium. Some, if it were not for the shepherd, would have drowned. 
What were we thirsty for? <laughs> what were we thirsty for? Was he that good looking? Did you need her that much? Rushed into the stream ahead of the shepherd. Got our coats wet. Lost equilibrium. Many have drowned. The Bible says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Wait, I say, on the Lord. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, the song says. Teach me, Lord, how to wait. Running ahead of the shepherd did not turn out too right. But then, not only does the shepherd restore the soul of a sheep, but the shepherd leads the sheep to waters where it can drink and not drown. But then the shepherd leads the sheep to what? I said it before. Green pastures. Green pastures. How many of us are enjoying green pastures? A life of green pastures. The children are obedient. Green pastures. The relationship is mm, perfect. Green pastures. Money in the bank? Green pasture. The car is well oiled and gassed up every time. Green pasture. We're building a tarmac at the back of the church. Green pasture. Fans and green pastures. The Bible says, don't miss this. He makes me. He makes me to lie down. Let me tell you something about sheep. You see when, when they are fine, they're resting, and they're in the green pasture, you know what they, they normally do? Pardon me? Play. Frolic. Play. Frolic. Have a good time. But the shepherd knows that the journey ahead is long. You would need something to take with you ahead. We're looking back, we're looking back. When the sheep are laying down, everybody expects that a sheep should be eating in green pasture. But in this case, the sheep needs to rest. And while he is resting, he is what? Something is happening with the mouth. Pardon me? Chewing the cud, meaning? Regurgitating, meaning that is... Redigesting. When the sheep is quiet and in a good place the sheep needs to value that time rocky days are ahead vipers are ahead wolves are ahead when there is a time when the pastures are green lay yourself down Bring up stuff that you chewed on some time ago and reprocess it. Because as you transition into the future, you need that time of rest. 
When the food comes up and it is chewed, it goes through a different process. Now, now bear in mind that at this time of peace, have you ever been in a home, well, you are a part of a home, but you've ever been in a home where when all the arguing stops and the fighting subsides and all these things, and, and there's a calm, you could actually talk about things? All right, let me make it a little bit clearer. When we are not fighting, I can say to you, I feel hurt when I feel even lonely when you bring your cell phone to bed and you choose to look at something else and I'm right there. And in that time when things are okay, you could say to me, you know what? You're right, you know. This is what I don't like, really. I feel hurt when you drink the water from the fridge and you don't fall back the bottle. <laughs> All right. All right, let's, let's get off of that. Children, children, listen. I would love for you to clean up your room. You know why? We're talking about time of peace, you know. The room is clean. All the toys are put away. The children are comfortable under the net. We're about to tell some bedtime stories. And you say, listen, you know what? Jesus finds it hard to move through this room when your toys are all over the place. Do you want to see your angels tripping over your toys? Man, clean the room! All right. That was a little drama. But what I'm saying is during your times of peace, that is the best time to process where you've been. This process it. We spend, we do not spend enough time in meaningful reflection. We move from one job to the next, from one activity to the next. And before you know it, our lives are going in a cycle and we don't make changes. So, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to end there. We've done some introspection. The government of Barbados probably did some, intro, some retrospection, sorry, and some introspection. Now they are projecting. They are doing some projections, and, and we, we, we can do the same. All right, and the psalmist changes the venue and the metaphors, and now he's looking into the future. And, and I, want, I want to say this about the, the BLP. This is what um, Prime Minister Motley says. And this is written um, in, in the People's Manifesto 2018, the mini edition. This is what she said. One of the major features of the People's Manifesto 2018 mini edition is a well-articulated and carefully considered urgent agenda of 17 items. Listen to this. She's projecting. To be completed in the very near future. The first six months, to be exact. Some of which include, and I just um, took about four out of the 17. One, increasing the minimum wage from $6.25 to what? Two? $8. You are following the news. Don't behave as if you're not following the news. Stay with me. Another projection is to increase non-contributory pension from one one hundred and fifty five dollars to what <laughs> stick with me stick with me three dealing with the economy choking debt incurred by the previous administration we're not going in there number four 
procuring new buses and repairing old ones. Pardon me? In St. John? She, along with her team, they project that in the future, these are the things we want to accomplish. Isn't that a good thing? That's a very good thing. If the BLP could do that, then the psalmist has something to say concerning the future. I'll tell you what we will do. Psalm 23 and verse 6 caught my attention because not only did the, did the scene shift from pastoral lands where the shepherd dealt with his sheep, he went into the palace where the host dealt with his guest. And then verse 6 says, so the, sheep, the shepherd is leading his sheep all along. Now, he says that goodness and mercy shall what? Follow. I was a little confused because I was wondering if the shepherd got to a place or the psalmist got to a place where he led himself where he chartered his own course and allowed God to come behind him. Th 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 that was my initial thought. Did the shepherd feel so confident about the future? Did the shepherd rely on projections that he thought to himself, he'll be fine? Goodness and mercy, we got that. Was that the case? So when I investigated, I found out a few things. Goodness, as a matter of fact, surely speaks of a certain degree of what? Certainty. And it is used, it is used as um, an adverbial phrase which says this adverbial particle expressing a very strong positive assertion of truth surely says that he is convicted convinced absolutely undoubtedly sure that this is going to happen <laughs> first thing secondly Goodness and mercy are not persons. Shepherd, sheep, guests, host. Th those are persons. But here he's saying goodness and mercy which are used attributively make the point. They are used, and this is what I found out. Attributive adjectives are adjectives that describe a characteristic or attribute of the noun or pronoun that it or they modify. Not only do we, we cannot say that attributes will follow the, sh the, the, the psalmist, we are actually saying, or what he is saying, that these attributes belong to someone. Follow me. These attributes belong to whom? The shepherd or the host, the father, God. He is convinced that God will follow him. What does follow mean? Somebody talk to me. What does follow mean? Pardon me? Pardon me? Do you expect me to hear everybody the same? <laughs> All right, somebody, one person. 
What does follow mean? Somebody's walking behind. So in this case, is, is David leading and God following behind? Walking behind? Is both leading and following. All right, all right, all right. God's presence. No, 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 Sister Rock. I want to hold this and I want to keep it because this is the essence of what the Psalms is speaking. We're talking about the future. My future looks pretty bright and your future does as well. But our futures, the brightness of our, of our future does not depend on how much we can calculate and how much we can fix for ourselves. Our, the brightness of our future depends upon the presence of God with us. Now, th this is what David means. The word follow there in the, in the Hebrew could mean several things. Most times it was used to illustrate pursuing after something or after someone with evil intent. To overtake, to overthrow, to, to subdue. But in this one case, I am, I am glad for exceptions. I am glad for exceptions. When everybody else is being favored, God chooses an exception in me. When everybody else is going south, God chooses an exception in me. In this case, this is what the Bible means. To attend closely upon. Follows here means to attend closely upon. God is going to be an attendant. Why do I need this? God is going to be my attendant. Now, what work, what kind of work does an attendant do? Pardon me? Pump gas? And he serves anything that the maybe customer needs the attendant is there to supply anything that the sheep needs singular sheep needs God being the attendant is there to supply as a matter of fact the Bible says my God shall supply all of my needs according to God is going to attend. When I get sick, I'm not saying that I will not get sick. When I get sick, at my bedside, God will be there to attend. Sweating, he'll wipe the sweat away. I may be crying now, but he said, Weeping may last tonight, but there's coming a morning. My joy comes in the morning because God is attending unto me. I know that. I'll have needs. My relationship is on the rocks. Wife wants to walk out. Husband wants to leave. God is saying that if your mother and your father and your brother and your children and your spouse, if they walk out on you, God will be right there. He says, 
I will never leave you. Nor will I forsake you. God is right there. When I need help, he is my very present help in times of trouble. I am sure about my future. I don't know what to expect in the future. I don't know what troubles will come. I don't need to know. All I know, looking back in my life, that the shepherd had gone with me, gone before me, and now I'm sure he will attend unto me. Today, somebody needs to know the shepherd has not left your side. You thought he was gone. The valley was dark. But the shepherd is right there. As a matter of fact, he is so closely attached to me that the shepherd thought of as being distant left heaven came to earth God among men now he is touched with the very feelings of my infirmities God has granted me healing because he's right there. When I get hurt, he will heal me. When I get hungry, he will feed me. When I am sick, he will doctor me. When I'm naked, he will clothe me. When I am friend, Less as in terms of friends leave. He will be a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I want to just say amen and leave. But today, I'm going to make an appeal and then I'm going to be specific about the call that I'm going to make. The appeal is no one or anything has the final say concerning your future. Say that again. Diabetes does not have the final say in my future. No person, my boss, does not have the final say concerning my future. My wife does not have the final, because if she had the final say and she left, I would fall on my face and die. But I'm glad that she does not have the final say. I do not have the final say in her life. Our children don't have the final say in our lives. No pastor, elder, deacon has the final say in my life. What does that mean? You can curse me all you want. You don't have the final say. Not even death has the final say. For though this flesh may perish, one day with my eyes like Job, I'll see God. I tell you of a mystery. We shall all not sleep. Nothing and no one has the final say concerning your future. Those who are at university and you're finding it hard to 
pay tuition. Your bills don't have the final say. Persevere. Finish your course. They don't have the final say. That's the appeal. The call is twofold. One, there are some sheep right now in this house that have felt that God, the shepherd, has somehow abandoned them. Left them to plot their own course. Choose their own spouse. Find their own job. Make their own money. If you are one of those sheep, you may think that God has abandoned you. The shepherd has never left. He is right there. If you have felt that the, sheep, that the shepherd has left you, there is hope for you today. That is the call for one set of sheep. The other sheep may have stepped out in some territory and got themselves lost. Crying for help and no one answers. Bawling in the middle of the night. It appears as though no one cares. Some sheep have walked away from the shepherd. The shepherd is looking for you. The shepherd is calling you. Come, Nigel. Come, Cheryl. Come. Come. You're lost and you, you're calling, Lord, where are you? And he's answering you. He's going to find you. And when he finds you and he takes you back to the fold, you are guaranteed some rejoicing, some celebration. All heaven will rejoice because you won sheep. You heard the, the shepherd calling and you answered. And lastly, there is the other group where you, you, you don't even know who the shepherd is. You're not a part of any fold running your own life the way you seem fit. Today, listen to me and listen to me carefully. The shepherd says, you don't even know it, but you belong to me. And when you hear my voice, you will know it. You will know that I'm calling you. He says, my sheep know my voice. He's going to take you and bring you into his fold. Now I know that the fold is not always the sweetest place. The fold has people, other sheep rather, that would hurt you, I know. But the fold is still a safe place because where the shepherd is going, his fold will go also. So the first group, of believers who just know the Lord is your shepherd and you just need some assurance that your future is going to be all right I ask you to stand to your feet you know that Jesus is your shepherd you've answered his call a long time ago he's calling you reminding you that he's there with you and you just need that assurance. You're going through a rough time right now, but you need to know that the shepherd is there with you. You're standing to your feet. Close your eyes with me. 
while you close your eyes, the second group needs to know that Jesus is calling you back to the fold. You walked away from this fold. You know in your heart you walked away. He's calling you back. And while the first group of sheep stand being reassured of the presence of the shepherd, the other group of sheep can raise your hands where you are. The other group. You have walked away from the shepherd, walked away from the fold, plotted your own course, but the shepherd is calling you back. If you are one of those sheep, raise your hands. Raise your hands where you are. You're coming back. I see your hand. I see your hand. You want to come back to the shepherd. The songwriter says, I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. You want to take a bolder step. Your hand was raised. I saw your hand. Take a bolder step and walk to the front. Step out of your pew while everybody's eyes are closed. Make a concerted effort to come back to the shepherd. Come to the front. Come to the front. The shepherd is calling you, come to the front. You've strayed, you heard his voice, and you're coming back. Come to the front. Lastly, that group of sheep that are without a shepherd, going and coming as you please, you want to join the fold of the great shepherd. There is a visible fold on earth that obey him, that follow after him, that live in unity, and there is an invisible fold of which none of us know. But you want to join the fold nevertheless. Come straight to the front. You are not a part of the fold of God. And you want to be a part of the fold of God. Come to the front. When you come, you are saying, I want to become a part of your fold. Softly and tenderly the shepherd is calling. Come. The shepherd is calling. Come. That call being made, we are about to pray. We are about to pray. And the call is still extended. Even while we pray. To any sheep. Who has not. Come to the shepherd to come now. The call is made. Our oh, Father, our great God, we can see that organizations are planning and making projections for the future. A typical example is the Barbados. Labor Party making plans for a brighter future for nationals for non-nationals for children for senior citizens in a very profound way you have demonstrated through your word that you know the plans you have for us. Plans to prosper us. 
not only financially and health-wise, but even spiritually. Dear God, your plans for us are greater than the plans for any country. For the place to which we go is a country that is built without the hands of men. We are glad, O oh God, that you are preparing a fold for such a country. And even as we look to a bright future ahead, help us to realize, O oh God, that nothing and no one can determine the outcome of our lives. You have already plotted our course and you've promised to attend unto us closely. Your goodness will provide for our needs. And when we slip and fall, your mercy will pick us up. Surely we believe goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. So Lord, we dedicate ourselves to you again. Every sheep bowed here before you. Every sheep claims the blessing of Almighty God. The blessing of your very presence. That regardless of how hard this life gets, you are a very present help, even in times of trouble. This is our guarantee. This is our plea. We ask this, that you remain with us in no other name but the name of Jesus, the good and great shepherd. Amen.